Good morning, Digit fam! Adam Dowd here, and happy Disney Plus Day! Disney's streaming service rolled out today, and you betcha we're gonna talk about it. But for now, we're gonna dive right into the thick of it. It is November 12th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. So you know how you Google the question, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And when you get the search result, the top of the listing generally has the answer to your question. Huh. 700 pounds. Not bad, Woodchuck. Well, Google wants to do that with medical records, too. You know those records that doctors keep about people that are so secret, separate laws have been written about how it's important to keep those secrets? Well, Google's not so good with keeping secrets. Oh, and did I say Google wants to do this? (laughs) That's my bad. Google is doing this. Right now, possibly with your records, and pretty much definitely without your consent. Google is working with Ascension, which is the largest nonprofit health system in the U.S. It's a Catholic chain of 2,600 medical facilities, including doctor's offices and hospitals. Well, overnight, Google and Ascension announced how proud they were to be working with each other since last February on a project called Project Nightingale. Google is importing patient records into Google's cloud services and implementing a form of Google search into the records. Theoretically, you can type in a patient's name and it'll pull up all relevant information, including that sort of answer to the question that we talked about earlier. It'll give the patient a sort of title card with vital stats, most recent diagnosis, probably what they had for lunch that day. I'm kidding about that last one. Or am I? When it comes to medical records, they can be extensive, and studies show that doctors spend more time dealing with paperwork than actually working with patients, and yeah, that kind of makes sense. Google is hoping to expedite a doctor's ability to get the answers he or she is looking for as efficiently as possible, and Google pinky swears that any and all data it gets for this project will be used exclusively for this project and not to sell you Provasic, which is just going to cause liver damage anyway. Bonus points if you follow that reference. So what does this all mean? It means a gigantic faceless company that has held your medical records for years and years now has a face and a name, and that face and name is Google. What that means for you will vary. Maybe you trust Google to keep all this confidential. Maybe you're excited at the prospect of Google making medical records faster, more accessible, and more efficient. Maybe you're scared that Google is trying to elbow its way into a healthcare system and start selling you drugs. Personally, I'm not too worried. Unlike what you ate for lunch yesterday, there are very, very strict laws in place which prevent medical data from being shared with non-medical people, and Google will have to follow those laws as well. And in the meantime, maybe it gets doctors' medical records out of the Stone Age. While some will have very real and well-founded concerns, personally, I'm looking forward to doctors accessing any information they need about me at a moment's notice. So, now that Google is going to know not only what we had for lunch, but what color it was when it came out, let's head into the Roundup! Disney Plus is live, and I'm already halfway through Iron Man 1. And speaking of which, Disney had a pleasant surprise for Marvel fans. Instead of the initial offering of just seven movies in the MCU, Disney upped it to 16, including Avengers Endgame, which was supposed to be held off until December. Additionally, there's The Mandalorian, Disney's live-action Lady and the Tramp remake, and much, much more. Initial reports from tech reporters indicate that there are some problems, and yeah, I ran into them too. It's mostly connectivity problems and loading of content, But hey, it's a 1.0 app, so there's going to be bugs. A little persistence goes a long way. We already talked about the scathing reviews that came out about the Surface Pro X, Microsoft's Qualcomm chip-powered convertible. Well, the harshest review came out yesterday from Wired, who said, quote, The Surface Pro X will go down in history alongside Microsoft Bob and Clippy as one of the worst mistakes it has ever made. I expect it will be quietly discontinued in a year or so. Wow, that's pretty mean. Not to the Surface Pro X, that thing is terrible. I mean, that's pretty mean to Clippy. Clippy at least had the benefit of being cute. Poor Clippy. Apple looks to bring VR and AR headsets to the market by 2022, according to sources inside the company. Apple is looking specifically at 2022 to bring an AR headset to market, which will be used for gaming, watching videos, and business meetings, with a sleeker pair of AR glasses coming the following year. Apple has reportedly over 1,000 people working on the tech as we speak. Personally, I'm excited for Apple to enter the space, not because of any hardware it'll bring, that'll be overpriced, but more 
more because it'll legitimize the space more than ever before. Not to mention, I'm curious to see what Apple will do with AR and VR. Microsoft has had some great ideas in the AR space, but it has yet to find a way to put that in the hands, or heads as it were, of the public. I maintain the Oculus Quest is the perfect VR headset for the masses, but there definitely is room for improvement here. Let's see what Apple can do. Snapchat released yet another version of its spectacles today, which Engadget calls much more stylish, which, I mean, they're not, but even if they were, would that justify tripling the price? That's right. These spectacles start at $380 and bring dual cameras with some 3D AR effects, which are kind of cool, but they're Snapchat, and Snapchat is gross, so we're moving on. Starlink launched another 60 satellites into orbit yesterday aboard the Falcon 9 Heavy rocket, which was being used for the fourth time. The launch brings good news on a lot of fronts, as all 60 satellites deployed without issue, and the Falcon landed on its recovery ship for the fourth consecutive time. Also, SpaceX reused a payload fairing, basically the cone of the craft, for the first time, meaning that SpaceX is even closer to a fully reusable rocket, which will significantly reduce costs of putting things into orbit. All told, it was a good day for SpaceX and space in general. And finally, speaking of space, Mercury, the solar system's innermost planet, transversed the sun yesterday, which means a tiny black dot moved across the surface of the big glowing ball in the sky. You couldn't see it with the naked eye, but all of North America could see it with a telescope and appropriate solar filters. Of course, if you're like me and you have none of that, you can click on the link in the show notes and see a photo of it. It's neat. Not solar eclipse neat, but still kind of neat. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow.